What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. We're currently in the middle of the second trial, day day one still, I think. And let's see, Black Quill has just revealed to the court that the real identity of the Nine Tails wrestler guy is, in fact, the victim. Yes. Sorry, I was, I was trying to make sure I was getting that right. And we already knew that. So, here we go. Why did the Alderman have to forge a secret identity? Hmm. Does it not pique your interest, your baldness? I admit it does. It is odd that we had to create this other persona. Persona. Just to secretly participate in the anti-merger movement. Very astute of you, your baldness. Oh, back to back, your baldnesses. Right, now take a look at this. Blackmail letter. If you value your oh, if you value your dearest's life, you will merge Nine Tails Veil with Ten Metal. <laughs> this blackmail letter was found in Alderman Cubie's pocket. What? At present, the Alderman's wife is in the hospital, and that letter is clear evidence the mayor was blackmailing him by threatening her life. Wait, didn't the blackmail letter sent to Mayor Tenma go missing? Right after the Alderman's murder. You think maybe the killer took the letter from the mayor after the murder. And planted it into the Alderman's pocket. Okay. It's possible, but we don't have any proof that that's what happened. Talk about being up the creek without a paddle. Blackmail letter added to the court record. A threatening letter discovered in one of Alderman QB's pockets. Okay. Alright. Mayor Tenma would have made a clean getaway if he'd just left after planting the yokai things. But he was knocked out cold by his sudden decision to kill the Amazing Ninetales. So it was the Amazing Ninetales counterattack that brought the entire crime to light. Wait a sec. Fulbright's claiming that the mayor killed Alderman after planting the yokai evidence. And that the mayor was knocked out cold immediately after that? Detective Fulbright, please add your previous statement to your testimony. Boom! Is that, is that this one, right here? Mayor Tenma killed the sleeping alderman after planting the feathers and tracks. Mmm. Hold it! So let me get this straight. You believe the mayor planted the yokai evidence before the murder, not after? Absolutely. And then he was knocked out cold by the alderman's last punch. Hmm. That's... That's fishy. He wouldn't have had a chance to plant the evidence after that. Hmm, something's not right here. Hard to believe that a stiff, humorless man like the mayor could be behind such a stunt. Arr, we have to do something, Apollo, before they pit it all on the mayor. And then we're going to need to prove that Mayor Tenma didn't plant that yokai stuff. How are we supposed to do that? Okay, so we're back at the beginning, yeah? Alright. Let's go back to that one statement where something's fishy obviously going on. Right here. Mayor Tenma killed the sleeping alderman after planting the feathers and tracks. Hmm, what can we present for this? Let's see. Yokai Legend Scroll. Flower, paper. Hmm, hold on, what is this? No, no, not that one. No, no. Nope. Shoot. Uh, we have so much evidence to work with. Let's see. What is it? Stab with a spear, time of death around 3.20 p.m. And this started at 3... Blow level commentary by Timothy Blood. Yeah, thank you! Uh, let's hold on. Ah, okay, hold on a minute. Dare Timothy kill the female alderman after planting the feather and tracks. But. I don't. Objection! I, I don't know. The evidence is at complete odds with the witness's testimony. Like, something's definitely up with these times. Oh god, I got it wrong. Who, me? 
What do you make of this objection of his? Shit! No! I don't know if I should, um, well... I have no patience for vag vagaries. Now answer my question. Yes, sir! The defense's objection was clearly misguided. No! Bravo! Nicely done. Shit. Oh. What are we... What's... Maybe there's something here? Oh! Oh! Yeah, oh! I got it! The, the feathers are on top of the blood! See? Which means it was planted afterwards. Wait, why can't I present this? What's going on here? Ho ho ho! It seems our misguided attorney has earned himself a penalty. Ah, uh, well I know what it is now. I better look before I leap next time. Oh, I know what it is now. All right, here we go. Present. Let's go to that photo. Where is it? Right here, crime photo. Objection! Detective Fulbright, your sense of justice is anything but fair. What's this? You dare question my justice again? Yes, and I'm going to prove it to you. Take a look at this photo. This is the crime scene photo, and just what does this prove? It proves when the feathers and tracks were planted. Oh, yeah. But I already told you they were planted before the murder. The defendant planted the yokai evidence and then was knocked out while killing his victim. But that would be impossible. If you look right here, it's clear when the feathers and tracks were left at the scene. Yes. Right over here. Present. Present. Aren't you just pointing to the yokai feathers and tracks, Mr. Justice? Yes. See how the feathers are on top of the blood, and the tracks were made in blood. In other words, the yokai evidence could have only resulted after the murder. Then the mayor must have planted the evidence after killing the alderman. But you said it yourself. The mayor had been knocked unconscious thereafter. There would have been no time for him to plant any evidence at all, therefore. There must have been someone else besides the mayor and the alderman at the crime scene. Arrgh, there must be some mistake! God, Ace Attorney music. Ooh, so good. Where's your evidence? You can't possibly have any, can you? Ha ha ha! Actually, that works out because then he was watching the wrestling match at, that started at like 3:20, so that would mean he wasn't paying attention, right? I think that's what it means. Evidence? Oh, I have evidence. In fact, I have an eyewitness's testimony for you. Wait, really? You do? But how? Who? Was my vaunted sense of justice really just half-baked? He's taking this really hard. Hmm, Mr. Justice. What is this testimony regarding a third party that you claim to have? I have it right here, Your Honor. It's the sworn testimony of Mr. Tenma's daughter. Oh. The witness, Jinxi Tenma, saw a yokai in the hallway after stumbling upon the scene. Oh, right! It was the demon Tenma Taro. He's the source of those feathers and tracks. Hmm. What's all this? What's all this? Will somebody please say something? The defense will explain to the court exactly what he means. You dare to mock this court and justice itself? You're unfit to bear your name, boy. Your boldness. It appears our defense attorney here is delirious from exhaustion. Hold it! Apollo, think of something quick before you're held in contempt of court. What do you think I'm trying to do? Before you decide whether I should step down, please hear me out. Very well, Mr. Justice, I'm all ears, but you had better explain yourself well. What was this yokai you were talking about? It's all in this statement here. Jigsy Tenma asserts that she saw Tenma Taro. After she discovered the crime scene and called the police. She came around a corner in the hall. It was around here. Oh, that's the Tenma voice I'm giving him. That she saw Tenma Taro fleeing toward the foyer. 
the defense asserts that whoever was impersonating this monster is the one who left those feathers and tracks behind, intentionally or otherwise. What? How incredibly unjust. Why haven't I heard about this before? The defense just proved there was someone else, so the mayor isn't the killer. Was it all a setup? The prosecutor is a convicted felon after all. Apollo, the momentum has shifted in our favor. Good. Now let's keep it that way. Objection. Objection. What's up, bro? What you got to say about that? I bet it's about Filch watching the, the doors. <laughs> Little do you realize that though you are in the midst of a fray, your sword is broken. My sword? I didn't know I had one to break. Are you implying there is a problem with my claim? Black Quill's got sweet music too. Consider this, if that yokai impersonator had indeed fled toward the foyer. That fool and that fop would have seen him. Fool and fop? Oh, you mean Filch and LaBelle. Hmm, now that you mention it. Both Phineas Filch and Florent LaBelle were in the foyer at the time. But they haven't stated that they saw a yokai, have they? Did you ever consider that yokai was but a figment of a scared little girl's imagination? Ah, why didn't those two see Ten Mataro imp impersonator pass by? You idiot! It's because they're watching television! Or, Filch was watching television. Why don't we ask them ourselves? I was just about to say that myself. No, really, I was. Don't lie, Apollo. Don't you lie. The defense would like to call Mr. Phineas Filch, caretaker of the QB Manor, to the stand. I just know he must have seen something. Hmm, I suppose we can't ignore the fact that the little girl believes she saw a monster. I trust you have no objection to Mr. Justice's request, Prosecutor Blackwill. I understand that Mr. Filch is enjoying a nap out in the lobby. What a bum. <laughs> I knew that Tanuki, Tanuki, Tanuki was a rare find. But when we captured him, I didn't think he'd end up a witness. Do with him as you will. Did he just say captured? No, wait. I don't want to know. Let me drink some of my fruit punch. Mmm. Ooh, that is sweet. Mmm, nectar of the gods. Ah. Very well then, Bailiff. Please go wake Mr. Filch and escort him to the witness stand. Oh, Filchy, Filch, Filch. I don't miss you at all. Will the witness state his name and occupation, please? The name's Filch, Phineas Filch, caretaker of QB Manor. Oh, and this is for you, your lordship. Just a little something I thought you might like. Fucking Fulbright shoes. Oh my, what a fabulous pair of shoes, and your honor will do just fine, Mr. Filch. Ah! It's those shoes again. They keep making an appearance. I would love those shoes to, <laughs> to go on the witness stand. Um, don't they belong to Detective Fulbright? Don't tell me Phil stole them again. They're all yours, your honorship, sir. What? They seem awfully expensive. Yep, too expensive for me, but I reckon they'd be perfect for someone like your lordship, honorship. Mm, it's a kind gesture, but legal ethics dictate I can't accept such bribes. Aw, oh, ethics, schmethics, just take them if you want them. Polish them up real nice for you, too. I'm sorry about the shoes, Mr. Filch, but I will accept your testimony. The court would like to hear whether you saw Ten Mataro in the foyer after the murder. Ah, testimony time. Guarding the foyer. At the time of the murder, I was on guard duty in the foyer, just like Mr. QB asked. I was making sure no one, fair, foul, fishy, or otherwise, could get to our guest. I was still in my office keeping a good watch when the murder happened at 3 p.m. But I didn't see nothing out ordinary, no sorry. You won't believe how bad my voice sounds after I'm done making those these stupid voices. It's just, it's gone. And I've got to go to work soon. That yokai you keep jabbering on was but a phantom of little girl's dreams. So, you're telling this court you never saw anyone dressed up like Ten Mataro? Yep. Was gone the whole time, that's the truth. The whole the truth, nut a butter dud the truth. And Tim Mataro, bye, you don't really believe all that yokai mumbo jumbo, do you? 
I certainly don't. What hell was that noise? Hmm? Oh god, not demon powers again. My bracelets! Oh, Satan! Something the matter, Apollo? My, my demon bracelet keeps squeezing my arm. That satanic pact I made. Really? So you think Mr. Tanuki, uh, I mean Filch has been lying to us? I wouldn't rule it out. Ugh. Uh, demon! Now if I could just zero in on Atel. Maybe it's when he has that constipated face right now. Maybe it's when he has that constipated face. What? Well, dizzy. Is that the ah! What in the... Whoa, whoa, punch that thing. Whoa. Karate chop it. What are you doing? Where'd he come from? Oh, he's kind of cute now. Allow me to introduce my trusty cohort, Taka. He seems to have taken quite a liking to the courthouse. Made it his new home, in fact. He doesn't live with you, you know, in jail. Who's ever heard of a courthouse bird? Taka simply loathes trickery and fraud. And that queer power of yours seems to have offended my dear bosom buzzard. A bosom buzzard? I ever told you I love that word bosom? It's such a fun word to- OH GOD DAMN! Punch that shit! I won't be able to sp spot squat like this! What the heck's going on around here? Run for the hills! I'm getting dizzy after doing those now. Whoa. No pets or other animals allowed in the courtroom! Oh god, that's- that's got my- that's my wallpaper right there. That's amazing. Ah, somebody help! Oh, he's merely having a bit of sport. He won't harm you, save when truly famished. That is adorable. In that case, Prosecutor Blackwell, you will ensure your feathered friend is properly fed. Looks like we have to do this the old-fashioned way. We'll be fine with the duel, I think. If there was something, someone dressed as Ten Mataro there, Phil should have seen him. We'll just have to put our faith in Jinxie's statement for now. Mr. Justice, please proceed with your cross-examination. Cross-examination! Guarding the foyer. At the time of the murder, I was on guard duty in the foyer, just like Mr. QB asked. Hold it! Mr. Filch, why did Alderman QB have you handle guard duty? Heh <laughs> Cause he trusts me, I am the man as caretaker after all. So you took said guard duty seriously. <laughs> Let me tell you something about me, I'm... Yipes! Listen here, you little tanuki. Get straight to the point and be quick about it. The court wishes to hear what you did or didn't see in the foyer, and not else! Yes, of course, sir. Right away, sir. Blackwell's got him completely under his thumb. Like I said, I was guarding the foyer's entrance that day. I was making sure no one, fair, foul, fishy, or otherwise, could get to our guest. Hold it! Boom! Oh, God, whoops. So no one could get to him. Sounds like security was pretty tight. That's because there's always lots of sneaks and thieves around festival time. Like you! You're a thief! And the solution was to entrust the manner of security to a thief? That's not even funny. It's so funny. Maybe it's a matter of stopping thieves by hiring one. After all, it takes one to know one. I don't know, it seems more like letting the fox guard the hen house to me. Hmm, so the witness testifies that he took his guard due to seriously. Testify. Yes, sir, your honor ships are. I was still in my office keeping a good watch when the murder happened after 3 p.m. Oh, this is totally the statement. I'm not even gonna... I'm not even gonna... Can I just present it to him right now? Can I... Can I, uh... I should probably present, uh... Objection! Hope I didn't jump the gun here. Oh, shit, I got it wrong. I think. The evidence is at complete odds with the witness's testimony. Shit, I got it wrong! I should've... I jumped the gun, I shouldn't have jumped the gun. It's probably a new statement you get afterwards. Yep, yep, I got it wrong. Skip this, yep. I got it! Penalized, I got it. Damn it, okay. Sorry everyone, I jumped the gun. I should have pressed first. Ah, uh, rookie mistake. 
Ho ho ho, yes, yes. Hit me good. Feels good. Alright. Uh, I better look before I leap next time. Wait, is this it? Yep, here it is. Press. Hold it! Hold it! Did you really keep an eye on the foyer the entire time? Wait, oh, that's why I, I keep pushing the R1 button. Sorry, I'm in Animal Crossing mode, and then that's how you sprint around, so. Ah, poor old Filchy. Been working hard my whole life. In order to be smeared by some green horde in his fancy schmancy suit and silly haircut. Ah, sorry, Mr. Black Wheel, sir. Didn't mean to get off subject there. Sheesh. Black Quill didn't even say anything. To answer your question, yes, I kept an eye on all both of them, in fact, on the foyer. Really, no new statement. I guess I just keep pressing them. But I didn't see nothing out ordinary, no sorry! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Could you describe to the court who you would consider looking fishy? Looking fishy looking. Someone all fidgety and shifty like, you know? Like they're about to steal something. He just described himself. I wonder why Mr. Filch didn't see Tem Mataro. Maybe Jinxie only thinks she saw Tem Mataro, or maybe Mr. Filch is lying. And if he's lying, we might be able to spot a contradiction in his testimony. Let's see. Uh, unfortunately, it's been 21 and a half minutes, so I'm going to end this video here. So stay tuned tomorrow for the next episode, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye! Catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side. Faster, faster. Ah. Oh.